This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Orbitron by The Hacksmith is a very, very cool dual weaponed battle bot that released files for this awesome little toy that you can build that is basically an exact replica of their design. And I love this thing, but I want it to work. I want it to do some damage. To achieve this, we are going to scale this model up and turn it into a 150 gram ant weight, which has got some real steel weapons on it. Now, 150 grams may not sound like a lot, but I have built a lot of 150 gram robots. So I'm in a good spot to try and convert Orbitron into a 150 gram robot. But there's one problem. Orbitron is really complex. If I was gonna use the components I would normally use, we need four drive motors. And then we need two weapons. And then of course we need two weapon motors. And then of course we need two weapon mounts. And then a battery. And with all of that in, we've got five grams left to build the chassis and mount everything up. And that is just not gonna happen. And this is where PCBWay comes in. They have sent me some brand new weapon blades. These are 3D printed tool steel, which means that I could print them in exactly the shape I want, cut a bunch of weight out compared to the old blades that I use normally, and also run them on a smaller weapon motor. And these fit in pretty nicely. They also sent through some PCBs, which we'll be using for our weapon mounting. These are designed to be mirrored, so one side will hold a bearing to hold the shaft of the motor, and the other one will hold the motor, basically allowing these much smaller weapon motors to survive catastrophic collisions with other robots. And of course, these allowed me to um, make the right shape in the weapon mounting system as the little Orbitron does. Obviously, we're going a little bit bigger in our scale here, because this toy is definitely not at 150 gram scale. The next obvious thing is that we're going to need to paint these weapon blades. Orbitron has some really nice colors in its blades, and I kind of want to go an inverse color scheme on Orbitron itself. So I want to do black armor panels and white and gray chassis, and then invert the colors of the bars. And in actual fact, if you invert the colors of the weapons, they swap over. So we are going to do gold weapons. While the weapons are drying, let's turn our attention back to the drive, which is the other part of our weight problem here. And to fix that, we're going to use these, a nine gram servo. You may be wondering how we're going to use a bigger motor to solve a weight issue with our drive system. And the answer to that is really simple. We're not gonna use all of it, and I've got a trick up my sleeve. Micro drone gears. These are the types of gears that you get on little tiny quadcopters, and these are going to be the thing that make this work. So first, we're going to take the motor apart, then we're going to extract the actual motor itself, pop its gear off and put a new one on, and now this motor can drive these tiny little gears which have four nice little holes in them which we can use to attach them to wheels. The only thing is they've got this big section sticking out of them and they sit on a shaft that is far too small. So we're gonna drill these out. And add a wheel. And that's basically all we need to do here. This literally just sits in those gaps and then we will put a tiny little plastic screw in this a little bit later on. But with that, that is our actual drive system. And of course, we've done that four times. So now let's get a chassis printed. Okay, and here is the chassis. This thing has been printed with some little extra bits to be glued on because printing those flat would have meant so much support material to remove. And we can just acetone weld these in place. They also have some sections where these PCBs that hold our motors in just slot into, and then there's some geometry in there to make sure that these line up exactly as we want them to. They're a slightly tight fit, but that honestly is actually really good. So now all of that stuff needs to be glued in. These side panels are gonna be acetone welded in, and these PCBs are going to be glued in with epoxy. 
And while we're epoxying things, we might as well epoxy our weapons to our motors as well. Now normally here we'd have to stop and wait for that glue to dry, but due to the magic of printing two of them, we can continue on to the electronics. Uh, with some more help from PCBWay, who have sent us a hot plate for some very small SMD soldering and some helping hands for the larger soldering. Although large is not really the word, there's not a lot of room inside the chassis, so we're going to have to be very careful about our wire lengths, and that means, uh, yeah, lots of little clips to help hold everything is going to be very useful. And this is why this tool from PCBWay is super, super helpful. This is the LED that we're going to use and its biasing resistor. And this is literally a piece of rice. So you can see these things are absolutely minuscule and they go onto the PCB over here. Oops, other way around. Just like this. Now it is possible to solder these things entirely by hand. However, uh, it is a bit of a pain. So being able to do this with a little heat plate is a much better idea. And if you want to build something like this yourself, I will leave links to the actual screw switch itself in the description and also this little hot plate. Anyway, let's actually use the thing. So we should just be able to add some goop, place our components, and cook it. Okay, well, this is gonna take a minute. So now we're onto the wiring and I don't have a lot of space or weight inside this robot so I need to be very very deliberate with how much wire I put down. So for example the switch needs to go in here but then our battery which is a single cell battery but with two of them in parallel so that there's just a little bit more capacity in them that's going to sit in here and then I want the switch here and I want this wire to connect up here and then fold back round to the switch. So I need to be about that much wire off this connector and I'm going to have to sit here and do this for every single wire in this robot, especially these motor wires because these motor wires need to connect together. There needs to be two motors in each side and their wires need to cross over here come over and connect in the middle and then there will be a plug which connects into the actual control board which hopefully will sit in this side like this. That's a lot of very finicky wiring and I'm glad I'm going to be able to hold things fairly accurately with the big octopus. So we're going to make a start here and one of the things you should always do when soldering is tin all your wires which is to touch them all with a little bit of solder before you actually wire them together. This just means that the solder joint you make later is going to be easier and most likely lock itself together just that little bit better because everything already has some solder in it before you get started. And these are all wires that are going to go in the robot uh, so I'm just soldering all of these up. I do need more than this but it is nice to be able to do a whole bunch of these all at once. Uh, yeah. Lots more wire to go in. Okay, we're gonna speed through this a little bit. It took quite a while to solder this whole robot up because there is a lot of different electronic pieces to solder up and also I soldered in a lot of connectors. I quite like connectors. Connectors are good for rapid repair and also being able to disable parts of the robot you don't want running when you're doing safety testing and things. But it did mean that there was lots more in this robot for me to wire up than I was expecting. Okay, we're all wired up and I've also added some hot glue to all of the joints so that nothing shorts out inside the robot, which means we're time, it's time to build. We're at, finally at that point. And uh, you can see down the front here, I've added some extra armor panels and a lid. These are all just printed out of TPU. And we used a paint pen to paint on the name of the robot, Nucleus, because it turns out that Orbitron is actually about atoms and not about space, which is what I originally thought, but uh, a quick Google when I was trying to name my own robot told me what it was actually all about, and so therefore we've also gone with a atom theme. Now we're going to start by screwing 
these two in. And then we're gonna put in the wheels, which involves these nylon screws. I don't have quite enough of them, so I'm gonna to have to use one metal one. And if I run out of weight, I'll have to go and uh, get one more nylon screw. But all of these should thread in here. And a wheel drops in and they go all the way down. Like that, there we go. And then next we have the motors. So these should slot into these slots here and then we have some motor mount lids to cap these off. Once I get everything in the right spot, it will sit down. There we go, and then those get screwed in. With those in, it is time for electronics, which this is gonna be a bit of a tight squeeze, but we should be able to make this work. Uh, okay, well this is kind of there. I mean, we're getting close. Unfortunately, I've put too much wire into this build. It does not quite pack down as well as I really wanted it to, especially these ESCs. These are the ones that are gonna drive the weapons. And yeah, if we try and actually like put the lid on, it's just gonna be difficult. Um, but it's getting there very, very quickly. Normally at this point I would throw the weapons on as well, but I do wanna try the drive out and just see how the drive actually goes, especially as this is a new style of drive system for me. Or not actually, so I just turned around and destroyed all of the plugs that were in here basically trying to fit all the electronics in better and doing that was a massive pain, but it did actually get all of the ESCs down quite nicely. So the lid should go on a lot better now. There's still gonna be a couple of bulges in it. And I'm thinking before we do the drive test, we might as well also throw all the wedges on too because they are actually gonna be an important part of how the robot drives. So the drive worked pretty well as it turned out. It's pretty zippy even on 1S. I was running out of space on that little piece of test plywood there pretty quickly and having to like strip myself around so I could go back the other direction. The only thing is every now and again, I was getting caught a little bit. The wheels, like the drive kind of cogged a little bit. And I think that's because all of these are literally just a 3D print running on a bolt. Uh, and so they're actually kind of driving themselves in and out a little bit and then hitting hard end stops and getting a little bit caught up against like the edges of the little holes I've got in the chassis and things. So I think that you best idea for these would actually probably be a little carbon fiber tube uh, in the middle instead of a bolt because A, it would be a little bit lighter and B, uh, it would be a nice smooth surface to run on so that there's no kind of movement as it screws itself on and off the actual gear. Uh, other than that though, it seemed to work pretty well and when things were working, it worked Pretty good. The only thing I will say, which is very weird, is that this robot, when driving around, sounds more like a toy than any other robot I've ever done. And I think that is just down to the fact that I'm running these like toy drone gears. Uh, anyway, let's put the weapons on and hit something. So these weapons are a little bit tricky, but they should go in okay. I did design a little hole in here for our wires to go. So we need to route all of our wires through this hole first. It is a bit of a tight squeeze for this first one and then the second, or well, the first two I should say, and then the third should go in there nice and easy. Now with that in, the next thing we actually need is the shaft to go through the other side. And then from here, we wanna kind of get the brushless motor in the right orientation, pull the wires back out, angle. Now there is a very specific angle here where that goes in there. And everything goes together like that. Then we need to get our wires around 
we need to bolt that brushless motor in just from the back with some very small screws. Then all we need to do is flip this thing around, throw the bearing on there and then just push it into the PCB. Now that isn't gonna hold on its own so we've got two more tiny little self-tapping screws to put in here and these just tap straight into the PCB to hold this. Realistically only one of these is probably actually needed but we've got a couple around the place just to be on the safe side. So one there and one there. Perfect, and then we just copy that for the other side. And there it is, we have one Nucleus all done and dusted. Oh, I love the look of this thing. It looks really, really cool. But if anything like me, you don't want a beauty shot, you want it to hit something. So let's do that right now. You know, I think that worked pretty well, all things considered. By putting two weapons on this robot, I've had to drastically reduce the amount of weight that I would normally put into each of them. So sure, I wasn't getting like catastrophic flips of this test chassis here, but it did dig in, it did do a decent amount of damage. I reckon with the right kind of wedge package on this and a nice lion drive straight at somebody, it would get a flip on them, especially in the 150 gram class. This is not really 150 grams, it's a little bit over that, so it's a lot harder to like flip over and actually do anything to. Uh, but it did pretty well considering that, uh, yeah, the tiny little ESCs that I had to use to just make weight on this robot uh, were browning out every single hit. That is what the beeps we were that you were hearing. After every hit, the weapon would get seized up and then the ESC would brown out and have to reset, which means throwing the throttle all the way back down again and then all the way back up. So that's not ideal for a fight, uh, but it is something we're just gonna have to deal with because there is no real other way of building a robot this complicated in the 150 gram weight class. But anyway, it now exists. This is it, Orbitron in 150 gram weight scale. It works, it hits things, it does damage. I think we have successfully completed this little challenge. Anyway, uh, if you have liked this video, make sure you like and subscribe. There is more stuff coming out. I always do crazy, interesting things, or I think interesting things with combat robots. If you've enjoyed it, like I said, leave it a like, and I will see you in the next video.